Hey, what's up guys? Tyler here with Secure Team. And today I want to bring to your attention something that uh, I can only describe as extremely troubling and disconcerting, especially for our futures and the futures of our children and their children's children's. Um, that uh, being the worry surrounding, once again, artificial technology, nanotechnology, and the fact that it's being intertwined with weaponry. Uh, which, uh, if any of you have been fans of the Terminator films, you'll know what I'm talking about. And uh, I say, I wake up every day wondering, is this the day that Skynet finally goes live? And well... The way things are going, I think we may just see something like that very, very soon. So, the first main point of this report here talks about what have been described as these genetically altered nano-weapon mosquitoes. That although they were only supposed to be in an early research phase, it would appear that this may not be the whole truth and that they are already doing human trials on people, releasing these almost machine like mosquitoes, little uh, terminator mosquitoes, off into the wild to use us humans as their guinea pigs. Uh, multiple reports came out recently uh, after a woman in Texas sadly perished after being bit, or at least that's what it felt like, by one of these strange mosquitoes. And in the article, it was said that uh, the woman had stated that this about quarter-sized mosquito had landed on her arm. A common occurrence uh, in Texas, as well as Ohio, where I'm from. Mosquitoes everywhere, and they really like me. I can't stand the damn things. But landed on her arm and bit her. And like most people would, she swatted at the insect, expecting to take it out, but instead of seeing a squashed bug on her arm, she noticed a razor-like gash on the palm of her hand that she used to try to squash the bug. And the bug wasn't dead at all. It simply got up and flew away. Afterwards, this woman had to rush to the ER, showing symptoms of an extremely high fever, convulsions, and an extremely low white blood cell count. And where at the hospital, she was admitted to the uh, ER overnight almost immediately, and the doctors determined that she had pancreatitis as well as appendicitis. Later tests also showing her liver was failing, but it all seemed to happen right as she was bit by this mosquito, with that original bite to the arm leading to a, what only could be described as a cascade of symptoms leading to a total body breakdown for this poor woman. And I have to say, the fact that when she tried to squash it and it only cut her deeper, as if she had smacked a piece of metal or with jagged razor blade sharp pieces of metal on it and then flew away, well, that makes me worry. And then you see stories like this, published back in 2017, uh, with the title, quote, Many nukes and mosquito-like robot weapons being primed for future warfare. Well, that kind of makes me wonder, because as we found over the years, usually when they're testing something that'll be used, or is supposed to be only used, for warfare later down the line, almost always there is some sort of uh, leak of the technology or the technology itself is somehow used on an unsuspecting public. It's happened many times before. Now, in a much more recent report from February 20th of 2019, we have this here reading, quote, scientists release controversial genetically modified mosquitoes in high secret lab. And yet another similar report from April 10th this past month, quote, engineers create lifelike material with artificial metabolism. So now we're getting into the realm of creating something from nothing. We are using technology to create lifelike material that has its own artificial metabolism, digestive system, and ability to do harm. And so again, when you are playing God, and you are attempting to mess with the genetics of certain things and or genetically modifying technology, as it were, you are going to, without a doubt, create things that are of an artificial nature that can self-sustain, 
self-feed themselves, go out into the world without any control whatsoever. And I think we're seeing this with uh, the mosquito, the nano mosquito debacle that's happening right now. Which, funny enough, if you guys remember, I posted a bunch of videos recently about uh, the embassy workers, both in the U.S. embassy in Cuba, as well as other embassies in China, who had to be rushed to the hospital. We're talking 20, 30 embassy workers working in an office building who suddenly began hearing what could only be described as some sort of sonic wave or sonic pulse that would suddenly cause them to lose their ability to see, their ability to speak. It threw them completely off their equilibrium. They weren't able to stand up, couldn't talk. It almost drove them crazy, basically. And so we didn't know where the sounds were coming from. A huge investigation was launched. The, uh, the embassies were evacuated, and to this day, we still have no idea what kind of apparatus, what kind of machine was being tested here at the embassy, uh, who did not know that they would be guinea pigs for the testing, and who unfortunately were forced to take part in this little experiment, some of them being left with permanent brain damage. Uh, from the so-called sonic attack or sonic waves. Now, later on, a few months down the road, a couple of news stories began to hit, trying to claim that, oh, well, the story has all been cleaned up, there is no big secret, no, no weapon being tested, and it all can be chalked up to crickets being captured in the building. And so, the strange sound that was causing people's bodies to break down and go crazy came nothing more from a simple uh, infestation of crickets that had somehow gotten into the walls of the embassy. Um, and of course, many all over said this is nothing but nonsense, a mere cover-up and a pretty crappy one at that. And while I think it is extremely laughable that you could say a couple of chirping crickets were behind the 20 to 30 people being hospitalized with minor to major uh, brain damage, being unable to speak or see, could be chalked up to simple insect chirps. But after seeing this other news coming out of what they're doing and uh, how they are modifying these mosquitoes, it really makes one wonder, were they doing something to crickets? Did they really have crickets in these embassy buildings that they had some sort of genetically modified using nanotechnology? And were they testing this nanotechnology through the crickets on these unsuspecting workers at the embassies? And, um, you know, a as I'm reading through these new reports where they are, you know, genetically altering these insects as well as creating their own living, breathing artificial tissue that has the ability to grow itself. You know, it kind of, I would think it would have to make, well, it does, for me at least, I have to take a step back and say, whoa, what are we doing here? Are we playing God? Are, are we doing something that's really going to benefit humanity? Or is this something like Terminator, where at one point these things are going to become self-aware and realize that they have no masters, they can do what they want, they are now smarter than us, have more data than us, and what happens then? What happens then? So, you know, I wanted to get your guys' opinions down below, and I wanted to finish out this video by showing you some clips from another recent video I did uh, that just dives a little bit deeper into what is being done with artificial intelligence uh, and the technology surrounding it. And after you guys check that out, you can put down below your final opinions about AI, about robots, about genetically manipulating insects and things of that nature. There's a lot of different angles to this AI stuff. And so check out the rest of the video if you would. Tell me what you think down below and I will see you all back here in just a bit. I want to go and watch it again because it's uh, one of the most interesting topics I'd say I've ever posted a video on. And so today's video is a follow-up and it relates directly to this AI technology that was creating the non-existing faces. And so now we have found out that the company behind this technology, NVIDIA, which you all know is the, the creator of the graphics in your computers that you use to play video games, has now advanced their AI technology to not only just create um, fictitious static photographs, 
but they have now advanced their capabilities to where the AI system can take a video just like the one you're seeing here where we have the actual video on the left that was taken in the winter and take that scene and generate it into a new scene this time that looks as if it was taken during the summertime. And as you're watching this, you're probably thinking, okay, it looks like they recorded themselves driving down the street in winter, then they waited until summer and did the same thing, and now we're just playing them side by side. You'd be wrong, because the clip that you're seeing on the right here of all these trees and the blue sky and the sun shining down, none of that's real. That is all 100% computer generated from this original video on the left taken during the winter time, where everything's covered in snow, there are no trees, this is some mind-blowing stuff. And I'm going to show you another video here in a minute. But basically, researchers at NVIDIA recently published details of an AI framework that lets computers imagine what a sunny street looks like when it's raining, or snowing, or even pitch black outside. And they say that they are doing this to aid in the advancement of self-driving cars. Because up until now, usually the only place that they test these self-driving cars is out in sunny, hot California. And so, NVIDIA is basically saying that they are creating this technology to give to those self-driving cars so they can see what it would feel like driving in the snow or the rain without actually having to do it. But obviously, this technology would have and will have many more applications. Uh, here you're seeing the video where the AI system has taken a real video taken uh, on the highway during a sunny, beautiful day and turned it into nighttime here on the right. Which again, uh, to the untrained eye, would simply look like two different videos, one taken during the day and one at night. Uh, however, during the nighttime footage, you can see a little bit more of this uh, glitching or rustiness, we'll just say, to the technology. And that's particularly visible around the cars. Uh, but still, and to the untrained eye, I doubt most people would notice it or tell the difference. And so originally, in order for this system to do what it's doing and do what you're seeing on the screen here, it would need to actually have images of one during the day and one during the night, or one during summer or one during winter. That way it could generate the newly created fake scene. But the man behind this, who is the NVIDIA researcher by the name of Ming Yu Lu, recently explained that NVIDIA's new program doesn't need this prep work, and that it works without labeled data sets and manages to produce results, which obviously frees up time that they would otherwise have had to dedicate to sorting their training data, uh, getting images from these different seasons and whatnot, but they don't need that now. So. We have now graduated from creating fake people by the thousands in just a couple of seconds to now taking video, changing it from summer to winter, from day to night. And this is just the beginning. I mean, this is what they have accomplished in a very small period of time. But of course, who am I? You guys tell me what you think. I will put the original link down uh, in the description. You guys can head out and uh, read the research paper about this if you like. So before we go to...